Are these 18 karat gold bracelets worth about $6,000 or are they 15 karat gold bracelets worth $6? Today I'm behind the gap with Jason. We're going to be talking about gold, gold marks, how to test gold, if it's legitimate or real, or if it's spurious or fake. Thank you for watching Behind the Gap with Jason today. I am Jason Mosky, the owner of the Casey Auction and Appraisal Company. Thank you all so much for watching. I was going to share this on my page in just a second. And today, obviously, we sell a lot of jewelry here at the Casey Auction Company. We have sold thousands of pieces in the last couple of years, and we have sold everything from costume to costume jewelry worth dollars to diamonds and emeralds and gold worth thousands and tens of thousands of dollars. So what are we looking for? What do you need to be looking for when you're going through your jewelry box, your, your mother's, your grandmother's jewelry box, uh, or you're at an estate sale, a garage sale, thrift store, flea market, wherever you may be and you're looking at jewelry, what are some of the things you need to keep in mind and know and look for when you're looking at jewelry? So this last couple weekends ago, uh, Stacy and I, and thanks for watching, honey, were out in some garage sales and came across these at a garage sale. Now, this is an affluent neighborhood. I have found all kinds of great things at garage sales before, but, you know, every once in a while you find a really big gentleman's sleeper. And at first I thought I, I, when I came across these, I was think, kind of thinking I did. It was in a dark garage. When I looked at them, I took pictures of the marks because they were uh, well, jewelers on the show. These are the marks. So you can see that there's, one is marked 18K, the other is marked 18K.750. And this is kind of what it looked like. It was a dark garage, not a lot of light. And so I was kind of pretty excited actually for a minute. Here's that same picture in color, and you can start to see there's an issue there. On both of these pieces, you can see, let me get my, there's some wear there and a little bit of scratching there. Now, if they're 18 karat gold, now, right, if you guys remember, 18 karat gold is 75% pure gold, and these weigh about six ounces combined. So it's legitimately $6,000 for the gold if it's 18 karat. And so we were looking at them bottom, you know, the, you know, for whatever they had in price care at the sale. Uh, I was pretty excited. Saw the marks. They looked pretty good. They feel right. I've had gold like this before. They look and feel pretty good. Uh, it wasn't until I got them home, was looking at them with a much more stronger magnifying glass and loop that I started to become concerned. The, uh, the wear that was, was visible there was a big key. Uh, and then as I was looking closer, this piece, well, right, yeah. You can see maybe on the clasp there that there's a line scratched into it. And that was a pretty big indicator that somebody had actually tested this prior and determined that it was actually not gold, but gold, fake gold. This is even this is even costume jewelry. It's absolutely fake stuff because these are marked like they're real. Those marks are really good. Those are the kinds of marks you want to see on gold. 99% of the time, that's going to tell you you've got thousands of dollars of the gold in your hand. So what are some of the quick and easy ways you can tell beyond the marks? Because we've, you know, the, the marks on this tell me that it's supposed to be gold. It's supposed to be 18 karat gold. Well, one of the things you want to look at, so in this light there, you can see some discoloration right here. And you can't really tell. There is another spot where it's gotten a little, oh, right here. Yeah, and it's hard to show, but you can see that little bit right by my index finger on my side here by my lapel pin, it's got, it just looks a little bit rough there in the picture. That is some corrosion, and that shouldn't happen on a bracelet like this. One of the other, one of the other things that we do is a lot is a magnet test, and there's a pretty strong magnet. Gold is a non-ferrous metal, and if you remember science, ma magnets only stick to ferrous metals, metals that have iron of some sort in them. And so when we drop this straight up and down, we put the magnet next to it. You can see that it starts to pull just a little bit. And even more so on the clasp. And if you go to the safety clutch, you can see that it really sticks hard. And the same on the other bracelet. Get this to, to, to hang straight here. You see it just jumped to the magnet there. That won't happen on a gold bracelet. And again, the clasp is going to be a little bit more. Ah, uh, yeah. If you like that, if, you, if that's a trick that you can make money on or save money on, 
you can carry a magnet with you pretty easily. I know a lot of gold buyers here in town have a magnet attached to the back of their cell phone for that very reason. They'll take a magnet like this, drop a bit of glue and, and, and attach it to the back of their cell phone because everybody's got a cell phone with them, right? You can always just take that and do that same test. And if it's magnetic, it's going to adhere to the gold. Huge, huge tip. If you uh, want to be more concrete or more, you know, more knowing, you can do an acid test. Uh, we have these here at the office. You have a, a rubbing stone. You rub the, the, the metal on your, on the piece there, and you'll see the remnants of it. You'll take your acid, put it on there. And the different acids, There's this is for 18 karat. This is for platinum. Uh, let see, the yellow is probably, yeah, 10 karat. When putting the different acids on there, it'll dissolve or not dissolve. If it's 10 karat, the 10 karat will not dissolve, but the 14 karat acid test will dissolve the metal. I uh, didn't even test this with the acid because we knew just by the magnet test that it's definitely not and by the previous tests and by the wear that you can see in the blown up picture. The other, you know, a good magnifying glass and a good light source is crucial when you're looking at any jewelry. If you can look at it with a good strong light and a good strong magnifying glass, you can tell pretty quickly if there's wear that shouldn't be there. If you see a secondary color in any gold, you know that it's not gold. Um, even 10 karat gold, you're not going to see a secondary color underneath it unless it's been plated with something else. Uh, but even then, you shouldn't see a secondary metal because that's that's one of the reasons you buy gold. Same thing is told, true for silver. If you see a secondary color in your silver flatware at the bottom of a bowl, it's silver plate and not sterling because that's the base metal, and they 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 just they look different once you get to them. What are some other tests you can do? We've talked about the magnet test, the sight test. Just a good magnifying glass and a good light source is so crucial. Vinegar. Vinegar will change the color of the metal if it's gold plated or gold or fake gold because it, the acidity reacts to it. Um, there's a jewel or stone that's similar. If you scratch it, it'll leave different colors if it's gold or gold plated. Uh, this is what I had not heard of before: the liquid foundation test. I heard read varying reviews of this one online, but basically, if you take liquid foundation, put it on your hand and let it dry, and you rub the gold on it. Uh, the gold will, I want to make sure I get this right, the gold will leave a line, but the fake will not. I'm not sure how that works or what that means. That's the, I just heard about that. I read about that this morning. Um, the most accurate way to test for gold, there's several electronic test kits, uh, testing machines, XRF machines. You got, you, we had the gold med medallion a couple months ago. We talked about shooting it. Um, we took it to a gold refiner here in town. They've got an electronic gun. Basically, it it's, uh, looks like a gun that they point at it, run electrodes, electrons through it, and it reads what's in there specifically. And they, then you can tell them for sure. Obviously, those machines can cost quite a bit of money. There are battery-operated electronic gold testers. We've not used those before. We use the other methods um, because we have access to them and we, we feel confident with those. We also have, you know, on piece where question about, we bring in a third, so, uh, uh, another source of information, another expert to look at them. Uh, on gold coins, the ping test, and this is kind of hard to explain. I don't have anything to do this, but uh, this is much more for coins. And it's also good for silver or cloud coins. When you have gold versus gold clad or silver versus silver clad coins and you drop them on the table, the solid metal ones sound different than the clad ones. Uh, in, in, not, in less every day, but in, in pocket change, you can hear really easily if you have a silver dime or quarter, it just sounds so different than the clad coins. And I'm not sure, obviously it's the, the way the metal vibrates compared to the way it vibrates with others because sound is vibration. But uh, the ping test can work if you handle enough to know what the good and bad sound like. Um, we actually, on silver, we've used the sniff test. We'll smell it. it smell, and again, you have to handle a lot. Um, but there are certain things that there's odors that smell like silver or gold and others that don't. So I think the biggest thing that you can use regularly uh, for most folks watching is make sure you look at it with a good light source, a good magnifying glass, and look for the marks 
Um, but also, and this one has the really, and this one has the 750 mark, and it has the other marks on there. But also look at the wear spots and see if you find a base metal secondary color showing through like this one does in light and good magnification, which I did not see in a dark garage. You know, I, I, I paid 20 bucks a piece for these. I'm on 40 bucks, but I said, I think it's a great learning opportunity for everybody. I've been doing this for 25 plus years and I still make mistakes. Uh, and as I get older, my eyes get less strong. So I don't see all the wear that I used to, uh, even with glasses of magnification in a dark garage. So good magnification, good light source is huge. The magnet test is cheap and easy. You can, any magnet, the stronger the magnet, the more it's going to respond. But you can see that it's pulling the, on the bracelet right there and that is a telltale sign that it is not gold uh, and probably the easiest one to do regularly nothing is foolproof uh, like I said these have really good looking marks on them so obviously the marks were spurious and fake um, I've seen fake pieces past the magnet test because they were plated heavily enough um, to get to fool the magnet I mean this is you know combined this is six ounces you know, six ounces worth of 18 carat is worth $6,000. So even if you took a, took an ounce of gold and covered this, you only have a $1,000 investment. Some of you can sell for five or six or seven. So it's, you know, there are people out there who will fake gold by using gold, but giving it a higher carat weight. And you're using it as a thicker plating method that uh, is harder to detect. And that's, that's something that we have heard and seen before. Uh, and nobody wants to get in the situation where they spent a lot of money on an object to find out it's fake later on. <clears throat> so thank you all for, so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them here. We're going to sign off in just a minute. It's uh, <clears throat> raining here again in Kansas City, which is a shocking story this spring. We've had so much rain this year. It's crazy. The flooding in the area is ridiculous. Hopefully we're seeing the end of it. Tomorrow here in the Kansas City area, Symphony in the Flint Hills down in Kansas. Stacy and I love to go to that every year. You can see the catalog for their art auction on our website. Uh, of course, our current auction is online as well. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions about today's topic or any others, you can always post a comment here on our Facebook page. Uh, you can send us a private message uh, through the pay Facebook page. If you're watching this on YouTube, post a comment below. We check those regularly. And you can always send us an email, info at kcauctioncompany.com. Info at letter K, letter C, auction and company is spelled out dot com. And you guys get us a phone call at 816-283-3633, 816-283-3633. Or just send us a message anytime, anywhere you want to. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have and uh, go forward from there. Thanks a lot again, Stacy and Levi, for watching and anybody else who's watching that I cannot see. We appreciate you tuning in every week. And we'll be back next Friday with the next installment of Behind the Gavel with Jason. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.